Good evening. Before we start our meeting tonight, we have a special recognition by Council Member Jamie Stout. If everybody enjoyed me down front. We're going to do a citizen appreciation tonight for Mr. Dennis James um, for all his appreciate for all his work that he does in our Grandview community, and so we appreciate all that he goes around and he picks up the trash and he makes our neighbor look, neighborhood look clean um, along the access road along Peak Boulevard as well as up and down Gulick. And so, um, one of our neighbors um, asked me to share this as well. Um, in the Bible verse, Mark 10, 45 states, For even though Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as ransom for many, Mr. James, to me, models the example of Jesus found in this verse. He is choosing to serve his community selfishly and do what many would consider a task that often gets no credit or recognition. But he is doing it because he sees the need and makes a decision every day to meet that need of our community. And the up and down, so, and then, like I had stated, I'm in now Gulick and Peak. Um, little does he know, he is also a blessing to our church because he is helping keep the trash off our grounds. Um, he is a great neighbor and he is loved and appreciated very much in the Grandview community. So Mr. James, will you come forward, please? Thank you. <laughs> we appreciate will it very much so. <laughs> we sure will. <laughs> and then here's your certificate. Okay, thank but you. we appreciate you very much. Everybody. Come on. Mr. James. Oh, Everything's good over everybody would like to shake your hand. And I was just informed that his dad used to be one of our past mayors. Very nice. And now we will call to order the uh, City Council meeting of October 22nd, 2018, with the uh, please stand for the invocation by Council Member Wayne Johnson, followed by the flag salute. If you all bow with me in prayer. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, as we come to you this evening, dear Lord, we're so thankful for the many blessings that you provide for us. We're thankful, dear Lord, for this fall evening. We're th so thankful, dear Lord, for our community and so many that give in so many different ways that, uh, that go unrecognized. But uh, we're thankful, dear Lord, for the calling that you give them and the way they fill in in so many different ways in our community. We thank you, dear Lord, for the community servants. Uh, we thank you, dear Lord, for the men and women that serve in so many different capacities. I ask, dear Lord, as we go through tonight's meeting, that you'd give us the wisdom and the knowledge that we need to make the decisions that move this community forward. And these things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Mayor Bob Coburn. Deputy Mayor Jenny Boydston. Here. Dan Hall. Here. Marlon Coleman. Here. Jamie Stout. Here. Wayne Johnson. Here. Patrick Kale. Here. Ivory Van. Here. Derek Reed. Here. I make a motion we excuse Bob. Second. Okay. Any discussion? <laughs> Roll call. Deputy <laughs> Mayor Jenny Boydston. Yes. Patrick Kale. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Motion carries. And uh, we will go to the consent agenda, which consists of items one through. 
Oh, we left out something. We need to approve the minutes of the regular council session of October the 8th, 2018. Make a motion we approve the minutes. Right on me. Second. Any discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor Janie Boydston. Yes. Patrick Kale. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. And the motion carries. And then we get to the consent agenda. Uh, items 1 through 12. Is there anything anyone wants to move to the regular agenda? Move for approval. Second. <clears throat> okay. Any discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor Janie Boydston. Yes. Patrick Kale. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. <clears throat> yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. The motion carries. Item 13. Consider approval of Ordinance Number 4056A, amending the City of Muskogee Code of Ordinances, Chapter 2, Administration, Article 4, Budget, amending Section 2-551, Definitions, by modifying terms, amending Section 2-552, Restricted Budgeted Funds, by providing for Reserve Account Growth Strategy, providing for repealer, severability, and setting an effective date, or take other necessary action. Mr. Miller. Yes, Deputy Mayor, members of council, we've discussed this uh, at some length during committee me uh, meetings last week. Just as a quick overview, this is uh, basically to update our city reserve policy to meet with best practices, which uh, say that it ha require you to have about 20% of general fund uh, revenues as your uh, restricted reserve. Currently, we have about 10%. So this sets out a way for us to get there uh, by allocating about three quarters of our savings in any given year. Uh, into that reserve, restricted reserve account and allowing us to appropriate that additional 25% through um, an, a budget amendment process. Would also, uh, once we get to 20%, would uh, allow for savings up to 30% in a mandatory fashion. After that, additional savings would be at the discretion of the council. Um, as always, um, the uh, carryover money then would be used for one-time expenses only in, in a newly created fund um, called the Special Projects Fund. Um, so uh, we can uh, address this further. I know you're familiar with it from uh, our earlier meeting. We do recommend approval. We do think it meets the uh, the guidelines that you laid out for us earlier in the year. Move for approval. <laughs> I'd like to make a comment, <coughs> if I might. I'd like to show my appreciation towards our managers and our department heads. Uh, things like this are so very, very important and and they're tough they're tough goals and they're challenging goals but i just appreciate uh, our manager and assistant manager and our department heads taking these kind of things seriously no complaints let's buckle down this is the right thing to do and uh, it means a lot to me and it puts our the future of this community on so much uh, more solid footing than it otherwise would be and if, if we've looked at the past things like this haven't been paid attention to and uh, we've got a, a group of folks here now that uh, know how important it is uh, for, for the generations after us as, as a matter of fact and I it's not easy but it's very important and, and I'm appreciative of it I would just like to say I, I agree 100 percent with Mr. Kale's, uh, Councilor Kale's comments and, and also say that we're fulfilling the obligation that this council has made uh, to bring employee wages up and getting our fund balance in line will help us also continue that commitment and uh, again that's going to leadership uh, when we continue to bring our budgets in line we can continue the commitment of bringing our wages in line. Uh, uh, more and more so so thank you very much for your leadership of people living within their means living within their budget thank you and I'll second the motion okay we have a motion and a second or any other comments or questions? Mike I think they're telling you, you did a good job <laughs> well thank you all and I do want to say and I appreciate you saying that but uh, it's the council <coughs> that's setting the direction and I think it's a very wise direction and uh, as Mr. Kale said not necessarily an easy choice to, to do that but I appreciate you guys uh, showing leadership in that way we still appreciate everything you do Mike 
I think we all will agree with that. Could we have the roll call, please? <laughs> <laughs> Deputy Mayor Janie Boydston. Yes. Patrick Kale. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. The motion carries. Item 14. Consider approval to authorize the Muskogee Fire Department to submit a grant application to the Assistance to Firefighters Grant Program for a potential award of $600,000 to be used for the purchase of a fire truck and equipment or take other necessary action. The Fire Chief Mike Odell is not here. We'll ask Mike to tell us about that. Yeah, see, uh, Chief Odell is, is on vacation today, and I uh, told him he didn't need to come in because I think we can, we can take care of this one. Um, I do, uh, this is a grant uh, for or the Assistance to Firefighters grant, which we um, just received one recently from uh, last year's grant application process. We're submitting a similar grant for a fire truck as we did last year. Um, we're hopeful again that it uh, would be approved. We do have another uh, aging truck that I think would be good to replace that's in our reserve, one of our reserve older trucks. Um, so it's a, a very similar grant to last year, similar grant process. We're hopeful that uh, it would be approved as well. <coughs> would you recommend that approval? I make a motion we move for approval. Second. Any questions or discussion? I, Roll this call. is one way of getting our budgets in line also is seek, seeking other revenue alternatives. And we get a half a million dollar grant like we did on the last fire truck. That, that's a great way of saving money. Thank you. Roll call. Deputy Mayor Janie Boydston. Yes. Patrick Kale. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. <coughs> Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. The motion carries. Item 15. Consider approval of the appointment of Kevin Anthes to the Wellness Initiative Board for a term beginning October 1, 2018 and ending September 30th, 2022, or take other necessary action. Councilor Hall. Uh, Mr. Anthes is, uh, was really excited about trying to get on this board. I can't say enough about that, and, but his being certified or qualified to be on this board is an understatement. He's been the fitness and aquatics facility manager, a, uh, hometown hospice uh, county met coordinator. He's been the aquatic coordinator at the city of Muskogee. He's been the fitness technician and the water park uh, manager. I think he's got it covered. And I'd like to move for a recommendation that he's on this board. Second. Any questions or discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor Janie Boydston. Yes. Patrick Kale. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. The motion carries. Item 16. Consider approval of the appointment of Brandy Stevenson to the Wellness Initiative Board for a term beginning October 1, 2018 and ending September 30, 2022, or take other necessary action. Councilor Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, Brandy Stevenson uh, works for Muskogee Public Schools. She's the uh, nutrition coordinator, uh, wellness coordinator for Muskogee Public Schools. Does a great job with the kids uh, through nutrition, uh, and she'll do a, uh, be a great addition to this uh, aspect of in our community. And I think she'll do a great job serving in in this capacity. And that's what what my recommendation would be. Is that a motion? Yes. A second. second. Okay. Earl third. Okay. Uh, discussion <laughs> or questions? Mind. Roll call. Deputy Mayor Janie Boydston. Yes. Patrick Kale. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. The motion carries. Item 17. Receive presentation on solid waste collection analysis and provide direction to staff or take other necessary action. Mr. Riley. Yes, Deputy Mayor and, and Council. Um, as you know, in the past year, we've been doing a um, analysis of our, our operations as far as solid waste collection. Um, we wanted to give you a presentation on, on what we've we've come up with as recommendations and uh, get your direction as, as to move forward. Um, and Mr. Miller is going to start with <coughs> the presentation. Yeah, so we, we, when we started looking at this and analyzing our sanitation, we wanted to look at what are we currently doing? What's our present case? So we wanted to look at how, what is, it, uh, what is the present case for our citizens, 
What is the present case for our employees? What is the present case for our finances? What does it look like at the city? And so this is what our citizens currently, uh, currently have, uh, about sixteen ninety eight a month. You see all the extra services that we provide, including a household uh, pollutant event like we had just this last weekend that was very successful. Um, and so we, we want, if we do something moving forward, it needs to be something that takes those considerations into effect, that our citizens are used to having a certain level of service, and we probably want to make sure that they still keep getting that. We look at the present case of our staffing. Um, it's hard to fill the jobs that we have in sanitation. We currently have four unfilled operators uh, positions and one unfilled labor position. Um, that's out of a staff, a uh, full, full staff of uh, 21 full-time employees, so we've got five that we, we can't fill right now. Um, there's a lot of reasons uh, why we're, those positions are hard to fill. They're kind of what you might imagine, uh, but including low pay, um, and tough working conditions, um, even uh, when the weather's good. So when the weather's bad, imagine riding around on the back of, of uh, one of those trucks all over town. Even when the weather's good, you're still out in the middle of the street. And so uh, we usually, uh, we routinely have workers' comp issues with this group. Um, because it's, it's just a, a job that lends itself to that. If you look at our next slide, it, we have, as I mentioned, 21 employees. Over the last two years, we've had 22 different times where an employee was on workers' comp. So we looked at that. That's our present case. That's not how I want us to be treating our employees. I want us to find a better way to do that so that they don't get injured on the job. Um, we also wanted to look uh, at what our staffing shortfalls do to us across the city because it's not just... Um, make it harder on our sanitation department. The last seven weeks, we've averaged at least five employees a day that we have to pull from other departments just to make sure we get the trash picked up every day. Usually those come from environmental control or streets. And when we do that, that means we lose workers in fixing those areas. When we want to mow the right-of-ways, when we want to patch the potholes. Two, two guys would be a pothole crew. So if we have five people out every day, we could have two more pothole crews working every day if we didn't have to pull um, people from those areas. Um, uh, there's, lots of, there's lots of problems when we have a shortage in that area. So that's where we are. And so you, that's where we looked at and said we've got to do better. We did uh, an analysis, and Greg's going to kind of present the findings of those. Okay. So uh, our, our purpose, uh, you know, we evaluated the existing residential and commercial systems. Um, we analyze options to run more efficiently and the option of using uh, automated trucks, um, which, which is a truck that actually picks up the can itself and dumps it into the, into the truck without the driver having to get out of the truck. Um, pr provide city with, and the purpose was to provide city with recommendations, a cost analysis of an automated system, and uh, a cost analysis reducing, we felt like we could reduce con commercial collection routes from three to two, and we, we wanted to get the numbers to to prove that. Um, we did a baseline of our current residential garbage collection system. We reviewed data, billing, routes, observation. We had uh, people out doing route observations. We did an op operational model development. Uh, we benchmarked our system with other communities around. And uh, we identified potential modifications to the system to be considered. Um, what, what we're considering is possible route rebalancing, reduction, including optimization of trucks um, and in reduction of commercial routes. Some of the key recommendations that come out of the analysis, um, we can use similar size fully automated trucks. That's, that's something that we set as a parameter because we, in the past, had an automated truck for a while and it was too big and it, it was difficult to get in and out of some of our streets. So we, we wanted to keep a similar size truck that, that takes care of this. Um, we, want, we, build, we feel we can we reduce routes based on this analysis from, from five to three per day. Um, that's five days a week. Reduce personnel. We're, right now we have three, two or three on a truck on residential, but this would go to one operator on that truck. Um, and we result in two trips to the landfill per day, and we're, we're filling the trucks up. So we're going to optimize the route so that when, when that truck goes to the landfill, it's full. Uh, we pay per truck, not based on weight. So... That's just optimizing our, our cost at the landfill. Um, we're gonna, we also wanted to, to keep the level of service to the citizens as, as close as we could to what we have, so we we're going to continue. We had some other issues, too, with, with the handicap set outs and things where we actually go to the house and, and take the, the cart to the truck and dump it. So with all that 
in consideration, we, we determined that if we continued one semi-automated route that uh, they'll pick up the non-accessible areas, um, out-of-cart setouts, and the, and the truck drives, this truck could drive all three routes per day, making 350 pickups with one trip to the landfill. So we, there were some questions in our uh, council luncheon about this, and since that, we, I've had lots of discussions with our consultant and actually dri driven some of the routes myself, and I'm very confident that, that this can be accomplished with this truck driving you know, one way through the whole route and picking up 350 picks, pickups a day. Um, there may be days where it's heavier in the fall when there's lots of leaves and things, but we can do other things to make up for the differences. Then uh, the other thing is we feel we can reduce commercial routes from three to two. Um, we, we can set it up properly, divide the routes, and we can even, in the future, as we move forward, we want to even save more by uh, working towards a four to four and a half day commercial operation. Uh, right now, we're, we're still five days there. Our current staffing, um, we got one supervisor, <laughs> one maintenance leader, 14 operators, t 10 are filled right now, five laborers, four are filled. And we're trying to backfill with temporary employees, so we have two temps to help with the shortfall. Um, recommended, if we went with our option of the recommendations, would be we keep the supervisor and maintenance leader and nine operators. Um, those operators would be the Four, four for the commercial routes, there's two in, in each commercial truck, and then five for residential, three in automated trucks, and two in the, the continued semi-automated truck. Um, but we will, um, any, any personnel not needed will be absorbed in the streets environmental control. So if we did this today, we would have one operator and four uh, laborers that we would move into to those positions. Um, all the operators will be cross-trained so we can we can move them in and out of the trucks. Um, and uh, you know, a trained operator of a truck will move to a higher pay grade. The, this will be from a 33 to a 34. Our current average pay for operators is 12.70 an hour. Um, with the commercial and semi-automated routes, there'll be three trucks with two operators. This will allow, that's the commercial trucks has, each has two operators and the, the semi-automated has two operators. So when we have absentees, those operators can move into the actual operating and we can backfill with, with other, other laborers. Um, but at a much lower rate than we are right now because, because the staff is a lot smaller in, a, in that department. Currently we have 12 semi-automated trucks. Um, we use eight daily and we have four backups. Um, five are residential and three are commercial on those, on those eight that we use day. Recommended would still we'd have nine total trucks, so we'd reduce our fleet by three trucks. Um, we feel like we need four fully automated trucks, which would be three working and one backup. These would be two hundred fifty thousand dollars a piece. We have um, three semi-automated commercial trucks where we'd um, keep two on route and one to the backup. Those are our current trucks, so we'd pick pick the best ones, and then two for residential, one on route and one backup. So we'd retain five of our best semi-automated trucks that we have in the current fleet. Um, we've not, because we were doing this study in the last year, we have not purchased a, a new truck that was budgeted for and that fund is growing. So currently it's about 450,000 and growing about 30,000 a month. So by the time we get the trucks delivered, that fund should have about 800,000 available. So that gives a, we need the million dollars to buy the four trucks, but it puts us in a good position to pay a large portion with, with flexibility of a different financing leasing options. So we feel like we're in a good position to right now to, to move to these recommended trucks. Additionally, we can save in the future by um, purchasing, based on the study or the analysis, we can have a slightly larger commercial truck and we can reduce one route per commercial route. So two, two trips to the landfill per day, which would be another savings in the future once we do actually replace those trucks. And we'll, we'll see that um, as we use it, whether it comes to, that we are having to, to make two trips, but that second trip will be a small trip. So ultimately, I think we can even save more in the future. Um, the safety aspect of it, 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 engineering controls, which is not putting people out in, in the hazards of the, the, the riding on the back of the truck, the, you know, getting on and off out of the truck maneuvering the carts, working the tipper and the blade, and you know, 
whatever's in that truck when they dump a, a can, you know, liquid and particles can fly out. And uh, it's just it's just a dangerous situation. And we're going to be able to eliminate a lot of that with the automated trucks. Uh, and impact to citizens, um, including this fourth route, which semi-automated again, uh, we continue, continue our additional bag set outs, limb and brush and disabled services. Um, the only real impact is is doing a education campaign to position the cart correctly. Um, it needs to be facing the, the curb and it can't be overfilled or have stuff stacked on top of it. And we'll do that with a campaign through every method that we can. Um, and then <clears throat> two different trucks will be passing the street every day. And, uh, and our goal is to get that over time, is to get that semi-automated route possibly um, taken out of, out of the, the, the part, taken out because we can, uh, if we can get things moved to where we're using cans for everything, we can actually take that route out and do things differently there. So, but that'll be, take some time to get, get acclimated to what we're doing and then um, actually seeing what we're gonna need to do. But I feel like ultimately operations can change that we can, we can make those out of cars head outs different. All right, so we're uh, we're kind of towards the end of the the conclusion. So we we set out saying we want to look at three things. How's this going to affect our citizens? <coughs> to take these recommendations. How's it going to affect the employees? How's it going to affect the bottom line? And so uh, we looked at that. And Greg just kind of went over how's it going to impact the citizens, and we tried to make sure that all our recommendations made a very minimal impact on our citizens. They can still get the same services that they've come to expect from us. And then we see for our employees that it's going to be a lot safer working environment, a better working environment. We'll be able to pay them more, um, not only for the, the ones that work in sanitation, we'll also be able to have the people that are hired to work in streets and environmental control will be able to stay and work in streets and environmental control and not be pulled off to work in sanitation nearly as often, if at all. Um, that's going to show a benefit in better streets, better right of way. Um, we've structured it so that if we do have more employees uh, when the time comes than we absolutely need, then we have jobs for them in those important departments like street and environmental control, so no one's going to would lose work. And the analysis shows that we would uh, save 250 to $300,000 a year doing this, and we would do that before we factor in any workers' comp savings that we would have. We told you that's our highest area of workers' comp. We don't try to figure what that savings might be, but we know that it will be a lot less, uh, a lot less expense, more savings uh, on top of the 250000 to $300,000 a year. So as we look at these recommendations, here's um, what we would do if we got approval to move forward from, from the council. We would start looking at what kind of truck we need. Those trucks take about 12 months to, uh, to get, uh, get delivery on. So it would be kind of a long process. And so what we're looking for today is if we decide this is the way to go forward, we want to start that purchasing process. That would come back through you. You guys would approve any purchases of that size. Uh, and then we would start hiring somebody to help us map out these new routes. There's very sophisticated um, people that do that for a living that can help us maximize uh, our savings through, through those routes. We would have about a 12-month process to do that, and we could do our education during that time. So what we're looking for now is certainly any questions you might have, uh, any concerns that we, we want to address, and then, a, then some discussion about whether to move forward. And, and we have um, Allison Trulock here from New Gen Strategies who did the actual analysis to answer questions. Madam Deputy Mayor. Uh, one of the things that I would like to see us do probably outside of the motion when we move forward on this, I can appreciate moving the operator pay up uh, from grade 33 to grade 34, but I think one of the things we also need to look at is how do we move up the everyday worker pay in the sanitation department because I really believe that for the work that they do, it would probably be more attractive to be able to maintain a decent workforce in that area if those employees were paid better. Uh, one of the things that comes to mind when I think about that in terms of how we're moving in terms of the safety conditions, which I think is a very good idea. In the back of my mind, when it comes to sanitation workers, I'm always reflective of the I Am A Man movement in Memphis uh, that was so critical during the Civil Rights Movement to be certain that those workers were paid 
a decent wage in addition to having the safety requirements that they needed to be able to do their jobs. So I hope that outside of this, as we get ready to move forward towards when we're ready to talk about the budget process, that we will at least be able to look at ways in which we can improve um, the pay of just the everyday sanitation worker because of the work they do. And I know that some of the counter arguments of that will be that we need to have union approval. I don't ever believe we need union approval to do what's right uh, for the employee. I think that the taxpayers will appreciate that the council took the initiative to do what we could to take care of our sanitation workers. And I think it'll be hard for any outside entity to argue to the contrary, especially if they're supposed to be representing those employees. Um, Councilor Coleman, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding is under this plan that, we'll, that we will only have operators, only have mm -hmm. the higher level um, in sanitation. So mm -hmm. everybody, uh, even the ones working on the semi-automated route will be at that higher level of pay. Okay. The ones that don't make it on the truck as a, in, as a what would you call it? So we have operators, operators. and laborers. Yeah. yeah, as an operator. The other guys, are we going to absorb them somewhere else in the city? Yeah, in streets and environmental control, yes. Okay. Um, I just hope that after we do this, listen to Greg give his speech, that I can remember to turn my trash can around the right way. <laughs> I hope so, too. <laughs> you know, I know I, – I, I know that from council we had a lot of questions regarding this and I really do appreciate the lunches that we had and all the information and the study um, because I know a lot of communities have have went to this service and as we got all the information uh, that staff has provided in the survey that was provided it really is informative to find out um, because there is a lot of challenges that our community poses to this type of service uh, from the narrow streets to the number of uh, handicapped that we serve in our community um, to to a number of the we offer a lot of services to our community that a lot of other communities don't provide the additional services that we provide are very very important and that's one thing that I really appreciate staff looking into what are the services that we currently provide to our community and what are we going to take away and, and that's one thing that we really looked at. We want to make sure and provide those same additional services, those same services, and how can we provide those services. So I'm glad that that, that was taken into account, and how are we going to do that. Uh, so through all our meetings, the, my one concern, and, and I know Craig was looking at me when he was going, how is that one truck going to run those 350 stops? Because that was my my concern. How is that going to do that? So I'm glad we went back and re-looked at that at that truck and I know we're going to have plenty of backups to run that so you know all I would want to say is I really appreciate the diligence again of staff mm -hmm. and of the survey really looking into this uh, this plan has been going in place you know most communities are looking at we're going to have to get all, all new containers all new bins all new this um, you know we're kind of set for this already um, and and not buying uh, you know recent trash trucks we've We've really been doing this right to this point. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I would make a motion that we really move forward with this at this time. I, I think staff has done their job. We've, we've looked at this, and this is the best thing for our employees. This is the best thing for our community. And yet we're providing the same services and providing the best working environment, the best financial move for our community. I'll uh, second your motion and and point out my appreciation for the due diligence of my peers on the council uh, there's not very many time that we pull out the micromanager and council members and we asked a lot of questions and and staff reported back with a lot of answers so I feel uh, real good about uh, the savings and uh, keeping people safe and uh, uh, I think overall better service to the community Okay, we have a motion and a second. Are there any other comments or questions? Yeah, Mr. Deputy Mayor, may I be recognized? Yes. <clears throat> yes, I'd like to say I appreciate that, Mr. O'Reilly, because like I said, Mr. me and Mr. Miller, we definitely know what it is to get on the trash truck, up and down, up and down, up and down. But it was, like I say, it was some really, really nice, I've told this story before, but it was really, really some nice people out there. It brought us cookies and water, and it was just great. You know, but also, like Ms. Uh, Councilman Kale said, safety makes a difference. That's what it's about. It's keeping our employees safe. And I think it'll be, it'll be much safer with these automatic trucks. 
because I worked that day myself. I don't know about Mr. Miller. <laughs> <laughs> I just rode around. And it, we picked a day like today, by the way. It yeah. a beautiful day. I'll turn the floor back over to you, Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Any other conversation? <clears throat> Roll call. Deputy Mayor Janie Boydston. Yes. Patrick Kale. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Ivory Vance. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. And we come to the place in our agenda where we ask for um, citizens wishing to speak to the council. We have uh, three people who have uh, signed up. Jamie Stout would be the first one. Jamie Stout, 319 Kingsway. I just wanted to do a reminder of an event that's coming up on November 2nd and 3rd. Um, it's a soldier's child. It will be, we'll be honoring children all over our country who have lost a parent in active duty, along with celebrating the 12th birthday of Kaylee from Bigsby. Um, she lost her dad at, a, I forgot how old she was. He was killed in, over in Iraq several years ago. And so, but we will begin on Friday evening at 530 doing we'll go out to walmart we'll be shopping for 150 kids and then come back on saturday morning and wrap those gifts and prepare those to be shipped all across the country and then um, have a birthday party celebration around noon and so you can follow us on facebook at oklahoma a soldier's child oklahoma events for more information okay thank you very much also we have uh mr ivory van yes uh deputy mayor I'm going to ask for two things. I, I got a surprise tonight, and I didn't know I was going to get it, so I was going to give a thank you. But I'm going to ask to, what I got to do in this presentation I'm going to bring to you at, is to our citizens here in Muskogee so okay. you get bringing some knowledge. And I'm going to probably ask for at least six, seven minutes. I'm just, it ain't going to take that long, but I just want to make sure when I get down there, I don't have to be rushing to explain what's going on to our citizens. So... I would like that, and also I would like to give a quick thank you right quick, if that would be okay, before I start my presentation. Okay. What is your pleasure? Do we have a motion? A second? Or I make a motion. Let me I'll second it. That he have seven minutes. Okay. I you sure there's going to be enough time for you. You need more? <laughs> well, I, other, I don't I, want you I, to I, rush today. This, this other time, this this other time, I was I wasn't going to, you know, I was just going to give you things. I'll tell you what, ten minutes. All right, there you go. Ten minutes. Okay. Ten minutes. Give me ten minutes. One and a half. <laughs> we need to vote on it. We didn't vote yet. Oh, I'm oh. sorry. Uh, roll call. Deputy Mayor Jenny Boydston. Yes. Patrick Kale. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. That's not turned on. Testing. Oh. Ivory Van, 38, four, uh, 4338 Columbus Street. First of all, I thank, thank you, Mr. Kale. Tonight, you really surprised me with this uh, picture here. This picture here is the old Union Hall building they just tore down out there on York Street. And this is the building that I learned, well, when I graduated from Oklahoma State Tech, I went out here and joined, I become a plumber, a plumber's apprentice. So I went to this school, it was a Union Hall. So I joined the Union as a plumber's apprentice. And they just tore this building down. So Mr. Kale thought, well, enough of me to get a picture. I don't know where he got this picture at, but he said he was going to bring it to me. And I, I appreciate it, Mr. Kale, because, like I said, this will bring back memories of when I used to go to school out there. That came out of the Union Hall. And I did learn something out there, trust me. But thank you again, Mr. Kale. <clears throat> What I'd like to present you tonight is I had some constituents that have come up to me and asked me about taxes. Everybody here gets taxes every year at the end of the year. The tax, the tax person, our property tax is what I'm talking about. Now, I need to make one quick statement Mr. Manager told me to make. The city has nothing to do with property taxes. I just want people here in Muskogee to know that. We have nothing to do with that. Okay. Now, so Friday I went up to the county commissioner's meeting and they had their budget meeting. 
and they got the budget lined out. And so it was, like I say, it was it, it experience. So when they do their budget, the county commissioners, they vote on it. Also, they call a, a guy a board called Excess Board. They vote, vote on it to pass their budget. Okay, so they passed it, and everything went good. But so to get down to what we're really talking about, our property taxes, I've asked people if, you know, why is property taxes late? Do y'all know? I know y'all can't answer me right now. But Mr. Miller, I asked him that today. He didn't know why property taxes was late. A lot of people don't know why property taxes are late. I didn't know why my property taxes was, uh, were late, but I do now. So when you go out and you can get information, and I thank the county commissioners for get, uh, giving, sending me to school and teaching me something today and also Friday. But I went back today because I couldn't talk the other day. So this is the letter. When you get property taxes, this is how it starts out from day one. This comes from uh, the county commissioners. <clears throat> Muskogee County budget. To each city, corporate, town, and school district within, the, within Muskogee County, we are writing to remind you that per 680S3002, each e entity is required to file a financial statement and estimate of needs of the county clerk's office. Following, following are the due dates according to the statutes for each entity. Incorporated towns, they have August to August the 22nd. Cities have to August the 27th. Schools have to October the 1st. Failure to, f failure to uh, file all these necessary items can result in delays in the final budgetary process in all areas within Muskogee County. If this entity is delinquent in filing each filing, please submit the request documents as soon as possible. Time is as the essence in this matter. Respectfully, Sheila she Shebling. So that's the first letter the county sends out to the individuals like the schools, us, and uh, towns, like Summit, different, different towns. So after they do this, they supposed to have these, everything really supposed to be in by October the 1st, okay? So if they don't have anything in by October the 1st, that puts a delay on our taxes. Because the first thing, when they, when they figure these things out, uh, what I was told was, like this, the chairman of the board, of the commissioners, and they have what you call a budget maker. They, they sit down, and all these taxes that's coming in, they sit down, and they go over them, the chairman and the budget maker. Okay, once they get everything f figured out and go over it, then they, it, all this stuff goes to the county commissioners, and everything goes to vote. And then after you vote on this stuff, it has to go to Oklahoma City. And in Oklahoma City, it stays there for 15 days. That's after everything is compiled. Now you just imagine some towns that don't uh, get their budget right, or get it, you know, it turned in in time. That delays our taxes here in Muskogee for, for, for the, t the taxes to come out through the county treasurer's office. A lot of people think because t taxes don't, is, are late, it's the county treasurer. It's not. It's the people, it's the budget of all these towns, schools, that have to get their budget in on these dates. So, like I said, that was, I thought this would be some good information for y'all to know and for different citizens here in Muskogee to know. You know, we can put it in the paper, newspaper, but sometimes people don't have the newspaper. And we need to really get this out because like I say, I, you know, during Christmas time, you know, you got to spend money. And on these taxes, you got to spend money and stuff. But when it does come back, <coughs> when it does come back from Oklahoma City after those 15 days, it has to go to the county assessor's office. Then the county assessor sends it over to the county treasurer's office to be filed, to be sent out. So that's uh, Sister uh, Miss Carter is getting ready, ready to come behind me, and she's going to explain some other things. She's a student, and she went up there today, and she, she goes to my church, and I'm, I'm so very, very proud of her. And her parents, Mr. and Mrs. Carter, who's here with her tonight. But, you know, given, you know, we, we, I'm getting old, so all y'all up there is getting old, so young people need to learn to take, take responsibility and take, take over for us. And I don't mind somebody taking over for me, because I don't know it all. But I just thought, you know, I'd bring this to y'all's attention tonight for our citizens to let them know why, so, why our taxes is delayed. So I'm going to uh, sit down now and thank you very much. Thank you, sir. And uh, next we have Skylar Carter 
that wants to speak with us. Give us your name and address and you'll have three minutes. Okay. Skylar Carter, uh, 909 Horn. Um, as Councilman Van stated, um, I was at that meeting earlier today with the county commissioners and um, they kind of explained the process a little bit more about um, the property taxes. I don't myself um, solely own any property in Muskogee, but my family um, does. And so in the coming years, you know, I'll be taking ownership of that property um, in due time. And so it's, it's important for me as a planning um, student uh, that um, I understand things and how my city works. And so I'm interested in it, but most people aren't, aren't like me and they, you know, go to random meetings and, and try to learn about things. But um, I was really concerned, or I guess I was wondering, is there something that the city can do to partner with the county um, as far as establish some, establishing some kind of educational um, initiative to educate the citizens about the process? Because there's a lot of misconceptions, um, as Councilman Van stated, about the process and um, how we get our um, taxes. So if anybody wants to answer that, I would appreciate that. Unfortunately, the council can't interact with members okay. of the public during this. This is just okay. public comment. Okay. Well, I just want to throw that out there. If um, if it's possible and something that you guys can you know simmer on is um, to to establish some kind of initiative to um, to educate the citizens so that so that we're not putting blame where it doesn't belong and we're all on the same page. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. And. I'm yes, sorry. I have ahead. one more thing, um, and I wanted—I did want to mention um, I am—I uh, just graduated my master's from Alabama A&M with urban in urban planning, and am planning to start my doctoral program in, in the fall. But while I'm here in town, I would, um, you know, love to you know help out if you wanted to um, start that um, process. I can do what I can while I'm here. So, yeah. Well, thank, thank you. you very much. And with that, let's go to item 18 on the agenda. Consider an executive session to discuss and take possible action on the following. A, pursuant to Section 307 before Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, consider convening an executive session to discuss the workers' compensation claim of Vernon McDowell, and if necessary, take appropriate action in open session. Move that we go into executive session. Second. Second. Okay. Uh, roll call. Deputy Mayor Jenny Boydston. Yes. Patrick Kale. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. <coughs> and the motion carries. <coughs> if you'll please excuse us. And we're back. Let's have the uh, roll call. Mayor Bob Coburn. <coughs> Deputy Mayor Jenny Boydston. Here. Dan Hall. Here. Marlon Coleman. Here. Jamie Stout. Here. Wayne Johnson. Here. Patrick Kale. Here. Ivory Van. Here. Derek Reed. Here. Mr. Tucker. Thank you, Ms. Madam Deputy Mayor. Uh, item 18A, pursuant to Section 307B4, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, the City Council did convene an executive session to discuss the workers' compensation claim of Vernon McDowell. After being fully briefed on the status of that claim and uh, where we are in the litigation, I believe an appropriate motion at this time would be to authorize the city attorney to settle the workers' compensation claim of Mr. McDowell uh, in the amount and under terms as discussed in executive session. So move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, is there any questions or discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor Jenny Boydston. Yes. Patrick Kale. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. That concludes our agenda for this evening. Thank you very much. <laughs>